Hi guys, this is Ellery here and I'm going to go over some quick tips if you're having any issues with the Kodi module I posted last week on getting it connected with your Kodi box. So first thing, I went ahead and installed, well actually I already had an older version of Kodi installed on this local machine, although I haven't actually used it, but so I'll go ahead and open it up and I'll go through a couple of settings within Kodi. So here's the options I have enabled. So you go down to settings and then services. I have this UPnP option enabled. And for some reason, the TCP connection wasn't working for me until I did that. So I know that's counterintuitive based on how it's labeled. And I don't know what to tell you <laughs> other than that's, that must have been their labeling choice. And also I have this option here enabled. So here's what my settings look like. And if you go to remote control, make sure I'd go ahead and just enable, enable both these guys. And now I know the web server says via HTTP, but we're not, we're not using HTTP. We're actually just using a, you know, a TCP socket connection to go ahead and talk to the Kodi box. So the Kodi box is acting like a TCP listener and it's sitting there waiting, you know, as provided you have Kodi open on the box, it's sitting there waiting for you, the premise connection to come in. Yeah, ignore that. That's because I'm off site. I'm not at home, so it can't connect to my Windows Media Server if you saw that little issue down there. So I'm going to hit Alt-Tab. So that's the Kodi. Oh, one more thing in, within Kodi that you want to check on. Go to go over to system system info right and you see this ip address here make sure you're trying to connect to the right ip address that's sort of sort of real basic but just in case always check the simple things right so make sure you write down that whatever ip address for the Kodi box and the default port that you're going to want to connect to from premise is 9090 and again that's for a tcp connection not for http connection because I know a lot of the, the apps use HTTP instead, and so they use 8080. So again, port 9090, and that's the default port. And you see, these are pretty simple. There's nowhere to really change that back where we just were under services. And that's because you actually have to edit an advanced settings XML file on your Kodi box. And I, I doubt any of you have done that, so don't no need to worry about that but again these these options will enable enable the web server first and then enable these remote control options and enable these up and p options and again verify oh i got in there let me go back under system info verify your ip address okay so go ahead and alt tab into premise and go through some things to check in there. Hmm. Let me alt tab over to it. We'll just go ahead and leave Cody open because that's a, that's a going to be a different Cody install than what you saw in the previous video where I was playing with the NVIDIA Shield box. So this is actually on my Windows 8 machine. So right now I've already gone through this once as practice. So it says opened. So if we highlight network and hit delete, it says closed. If we double click, make sure you first off that you browse to the right you know, virtual UDS 10 connection. So you don't actually need a, a Lantronics UDS 10. This is, we're just doing this as kind of a workaround, a trick premise into letting us use a TCP socket connection as if it was a, a serial port. And we do that just because there's no way within VB script to interface directly with a TCP socket, within premise anyway. So that's why we do that. You could go, you know, I could have used the premise SDK and interface directly with the TCP port and done things that way. 
I mean, that's that's definitely a possibility, but it would just be too much work to do it that way. <laughs> and so we're going to go ahead and check this. So we want this for for my setup. You saw when I just showed you. So that was the IP address within Cody. That's the default TCP port. Again, we're not using an HTTP connection. So if you do check things with an app and the app's using an HTTP connection, that's not going to tell you a whole lot, right? Unless it's for sure that whatever app is using a TCP connection. And I did go ahead and I played with Yahtzee and it, it relies on HTTP. So that's probably not the best test. And I'll show you the, a really good test here in a second. So make sure these guys match. And if you go up to Lantronics, make sure this guy says running for the subsystem status because you want to make sure there's no no issues with <laughs> the Lantronics service running within premise. So that should be running fine. And so we'll go back up and we'll go ahead and we're going to connect to that second one. And you see the port opened. No problems at all. And so if it didn't if it didn't open fine, it would say port and then parentheses open failed. And that's it'd say it under this port status property here. And so since it opened, we'll go ahead and show you show you how if it does say opened, you can continue checking stuff though. You can go to view port spy and drag this top pane, make it really big. You'll see why in a second here, guys. And then we're on the second UDS 10 connection. And now we're just going to try sending before we hit import all, we're going to try just sending a basic command. So you go over here to transport command and just like tell it to stop. Or just pick, you know, pick a command and then let go, you know, left click on one of these guys and then it'll send it. And so you see this yellow green followed by this this green text. That's just the stuff getting sent out the virtual serial port. And so this black stuff, if you see black text, that's the response from the Kodi box. So if you see black text, you know your network issues, you'd really don't have any network issues, right? Cuz the response the the command is getting sent to the Kodi box, right? And then you're getting a response back. And so here, I don't obviously I, I don't have a clever way to break things, <laughs> and there's no way for me to possibly know all possible ways something could break. But so there's there's that. So again, drag this box. Somebody earlier was having it issues with connections and they were just pasting this don't don't paste the <laughs> you know a bunch of hexadecimal just paste the text and how you do that is you would highlight everything by holding down the left button and dragging and then you just click this copy and again up top you want to make sure you've connect you selected the port you want to examine right so we're on this UDS 10 the second connection which is my local machine and so we'll go ahead and just for the sake of, of debugging, we'll go ahead further. Say, say you didn't see anything, no black text. Well, we can copy that command there. And then we can actually use telnet, right, outside of premise to, to, to actually just send that one command and see if we get back a response. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. So in Windows, first you want to make sure Telnet's installed. So go to Programs and Features, however you want to do that. I'm using Windows 8 here. And then go to where you'd enable or turn off Windows features. And then you would scroll down, Telnet Client, make sure that's selected. And then you click OK and then wait for it to install. I already have it installed since, since you saw that it was checked. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then I'm going to open a command prompt. And I'm going to type telnet and then the IP address that I got from the, the Kodi settings, right? So, oh. And then I'm going to give it the port number, 
which again is highly unlikely that you've changed it. So just use 9090. And then it connects, so there you go. So there, well, there, there you go. So it looks like the screensaver activated. And so again, the Cody box was sitting there listening for a, a, you know, any new incoming TCP connections. So it's pretty neat that it allows more than one, right? So you notice in premise here, we're still connected in premise. We're also connected via Telnet. So right now we have two connections going into the Cody box. And it actually sent an unsolicited event packet. So you could wait for one of those, right? But for the, the sake of debugging, you don't want to sit there and wait. So that's why I was saying it's good to go paste one of these little commands in there. And then you can see immediately what it spit back out. Yeah, it won't let me expand it much bigger. But you see where it says result, okay? So basically, if you see something with result in it, I'm looking right here, guys you know for sure it was a response. So we'll go ahead and I'm trying to think what else to show you. Well, another thing before you say the Telnet wouldn't connect, right? So we'll go ahead and close this guy. We'll show you what that looks like just, just so you have it. Say you're say you're trying to connect to the wrong port. It'll it'll sit there and it'll say that. So if you see this type of message, where it says could not open connection to the host, that means you you really do have a networking issue. And so things to look at there, you don't have to worry about the Windows firewall, right? Because the TCP listener, the thing listening for the incoming connection is the Cody box. So Windows firewall is going to allow you to send an outgoing connection, right? Assuming you you know you have premise set up, right? I could see some situation where if it didn't let outgoing connections from sys.exe or prkernel.exe, I can see how that would be an issue, but here everything's working. So you could check, you know, your firewall, you can go disable it. And obviously there's a gazillion different programs for firewalls, so I can't cover every possible case. But if you see this type of message and you're using 9090, you, you know you have a networking issue and it's outside of premise, right? Because we're doing all this with just Windows Telnet. So, you know, don't go any further in premise until you get this to work, right? So go ahead and I'll close that. That's really all there is to it. Hopefully that helps helps you guys if you do have any issues as far as connecting. Oh, well, one more thing. I did go ahead and I, uh, I made a small change to how the import all function works. So you guys do wanna go delete this guy here. So just go ahead, delete that module and it'll delete everything else. So you really have to reset it up according to the the number six tutorial video once you do this. Now notice we, we don't need to delete the library. So we're gonna leave the library the way it is and then you would right click up there and import. And you just want this Cody, you know, two point whatever version XDO. And then you can go ahead and re-add your devices like we had before. Yeah, I'll connect to the uh, the one from the original video. That's my NVIDIA Shield box. And there's no, assuming you aren't using infrared control, if you were, you'd wanna set that. You'd wanna go up here and Select if you got the shield, select that. Or you can go edit the second one. Remember we made that in a past video as a way for you guys to go paste in. Like if you're using the Windows Media Center remote, you could go paste in the IR codes. Watch the number six video if you don't remember how to do that. And then go under home. So we'll go ahead and reset everything up. Tell it what 
you know, television connection we're using. And then we'd also go rebind the PVR object to the Cody box and just hit hit yes. Do, you don't need to drill into it. You would drill into it if again if you remember from the first video if you wanted to take advantage of that anamorphic boolean property that'll automatically dynamically change based on if you're playing like an MKV file based on the aspect ratio. So you can use that to trigger an anamorphic sled to go in and out. That's what that is. So all right. So there you have it. Hopefully that helps you guys. If you're still having issues, please comment below. Thanks guys.